The Matrix, written and directed by Lana Wachowski and Lily Wachowski, is a 1999 science fiction film that embodies philosophy. One of these philosophies is existentialism, and it proposes that the individual is defined or defines himself solely through the free choices he makes. It also describes that any attempt to assimilate man to or to define him in terms of the categories of a common human nature or to absorb him into his nation or class will be a falsification of his unique character. So the film is philosophically putting into question what is the self and how is the self formed. It is from here where I argue that the Matrix applies existentialism through its mise en scene, prop usage and a convention of the science fiction genre to suggest that by determining the causes of the effects in your own reality, the parameters placed on your self are not fixed but are instead fluid. The philosophy, existentialism, is evident in the film's employment of props, which are items that have a purpose amongst the action. Just before Thomas Anderson is freed from the Matrix, he gazes curiously into the prop beside him, a mirror that has a crack in its glass. The crack reflects his face, but it is split into two, and this visually illustrates the two identities he has been occupying, Thomas Anderson and Neo. The crack then repairs itself and reflects one face only. This change in the mirror's reflection symbolically represents the turning point in Anderson's life, that by choosing to meet Morpheus and that by choosing to take the red pill in order to know the truth about the Matrix, he is on his own terms leaving the identity of Thomas Anderson that was given to him by the artificial intelligence in the real world, and is now fully moving into the identity of Neo, which he has created himself. This change in the character's identity is significant because it existentially shows that the who you are given to you is not a fixed state of being if you have the capability to evolve due to the decisions that you make as an individual. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. Therefore, conscious choice leads to freedom in the construction of the self. You hear that, Mr. Anderson? That is the sound of inevitability. Mr. Anderson? My name is Neo. The function of existentialism in The Matrix is also identifiable in its setting, an element of mise en scene that can be defined as where the narrative action takes place. For example, Cypher wants to be reinserted into the Matrix, and he makes this clear when speaking with Agent Smith in an opulent restaurant within it. The setting around these characters is warm and tone, luxurious, and speaks of high social class. This gives the setting a comfortable feeling. This is opposite of the real world, where Cypher's setting is cool and tone, run down, and speaks of low social class. This gives the setting an uncomfortable feeling. I'm tired of this war. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of this ship. Being cold, of eating the same goddamn goop every day. Cypher could have addressed his want with Agent Smith anywhere in any way, but he chose an opulent restaurant in the Matrix. Thus, the juxtaposition of the two settings is made to convey the quality of life that Cypher truly desires, an upper class lifestyle to grant him total freedom in the way he lives, not the prison he was assimilated into, where he follows the orders given to him by his dictator, Morpheus. You call this free? All I do is what he tells me to do. If I had to choose between that and the Matrix, i choose the Matrix. So, existentialism is metaphorically embedded in the film's mise en scene to show that boundaries put around the self can be broken to reshape it, for Cypher is showing that through willpower, one can create their own environment unique to the character they wish to define their self by. And I want to be rich. You know, someone important like an actor. A convention of the science fiction genre is artificial intelligence with different meanings, ideas and attitudes using a fictional approach toward technology to tell stories of the human condition, primeval desires and fears as well as social issues or reflect current trends of society. And it is through this where existentialism's purpose in the film is apparent as well. Agent Smith is a computer program run and controlled by the artificial intelligence occupying the real world. 
They have deployed him in the Matrix to stop those in the Resistance from trying to free humans still plugged in. Agent Smith eventually captures one member of the Resistance and it is Morpheus. In the scene where Smith interrogates him alone, he removes his sunglasses and grabs him by the head, desperately demanding that he reveal the access codes to the Zion mainframe. Up until this point, Agent Smith has not demonstrated any sort of sentience, the bare capacity to experience sensations, feelings and perceptions, what's sometimes called phenomenal consciousness, and it demonstrates that the coding written by the artificial intelligence has been bypassed. What were you doing? He doesn't know. Know what? It is like when people realize that they don't have to operate from the autopilot, mindless drone mode of navigating life that is a trend courtesy of human society's conditioning. I can't go back, can I? No. But if you could, would you really want to? Agent Smith's decision is existential as he is understanding that, on the surface level of existing, technically nothing can influence yourself if your thinking is beyond its parameters, which means that the social and cultural frameworks put on your existence are not in place at all. Wachowski sister's film, The Matrix, is not just a high-octane sci-fi action blockbuster because when critically analysing it, it reveals itself to be a piece conveying rich philosophical inquiry underpinning its narrative. Through the artificial intelligence, usage of props, and setting within the mise-en-scene is where the philosophy, existentialism, is employed. Its function in the film is to answer, what is the self and how is it formed? And the film's answer is that by living from imposed paradigms is an injustice to what you are capable of creating from your own design, and that the choices made from your paradigm is where it begins. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you. <laughs>